We're now ready to prepare our app for the app stores. And I'll start by replacing the default icon and splash screen with one customized for our Uber clone. To generate the splash screens and icons for iOS and Android devices of different sizes, I'll run the ionic resources command. This will generate the icon and splash screens and output the result into the Android and iOS folder inside the resources folder of my app. Now let's see how this looks on an Android emulator. So I'm going to remove the existing Android code and I'll add it back in so that you and I are starting from the same place. So this will add all the Cordova plugins. And when we see the app startup, we'll see the splash screen first. Now if we want to test out a location in our app, we can use this dot 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 settings button at the bottom and enter a desired location. And then the next step would be to test this on an actual Android device. Because there can be some differences as you move from developing in a web browser to the emulator to the actual device. And you would do that by running Ionic Run Android. But I'll skip that for now and move on to iOS. So we'll do the same thing we did with Android to create a clean slate and install all the Cordova plugins. Now I'm going to run this command to see what targets we have available to emulate our iOS app. I'm going to choose the iPhone 6 as a target. And after we run the emulate command, we'll see our splash screen show up. And again, we can go into this setting and specify a location for our device. If we go back into our app and hit the button in the nav bar for our current location, it'll use that location we just entered to test with. The app seems to work okay, but of course you want to run this on an actual device using the command ionic run iOS before publishing your app. But I'm going to go to the config XML and customize the metadata of my app before publishing. In particular, the ID, which should be the backwards domain name of your app website, as well as the version number, which should be incremented each time you publish. And you'll probably want a unique description and author information that's associated with you and your team. And the next video will be ready to publish for the app stores.